This is Alexander Shalom Joseph. He grew up in Gilpin County. He's the author of four published books and two more forthcoming in 2024. You write both poetry and short stories, correct? And he, uh, you might know him because he's written a poetry column in the Mountaineer for the last three years. He works as a laborer and writes whenever he has every second. So this book came out two years ago and it was written when I was renovating my house with Larry over there. Um, and it was kind of about being afraid of my house burning down and starting to live up in the mountains as an adult. And then this book is kind of the idea of the house already having burned down and trying to figure out how to find meaning in a world that feels like it's burning. I have a tattoo of a burning house kind of commemorating that feeling, so I feel like it's nice to, uh, I don't know, be in company of people that understand the, ma the magic of a burning house. So, <clears throat> it's intense, but I think it's important to accept it living up here. Mm -hmm. I think the first poem I'm going to read is... So I work construction. I've taught and done a lot of different jobs, but I wrote this poem for like all of the workers up here. And I have a, like a mentor here and one of my handyman clients is here. So I thought it would be nice to read this kind of in honor of all the people who I grew up around and who I want to be like for these old timers that kind of drive around the mountains holding everything together. Let's see if I can find it wherever it is. Um, <clears throat> Sorry for my... I just kind of decided I was going to read this when I saw Larry and Serene here, so... Where are Larry and Serene? Larry and Serene Larry. back there. Sorry to call you out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Maybe I'll just start with a different one, see if I can find it. So this one contains my favorite poetry line I've ever written, so I decided to read it. There is so much to do, but I do nothing. I read on the bed for hours, or listen to folk records until I sleep. All the world is a mess of things and dollars, but I don't bother with them. I just chop more wood for the fire and then put on a warmer pair of socks. As the light outside goes, the glow from inside takes over, painting the pines orange and all moves with the stove flicker and pop. There is nothing but these wide mountains and me, alone in all this gentle night. The stubble of tree tips on the shadow green mountain line like a torn edge of the earth seeping into the sky. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Here's the handy person poem. <clears throat> There's a time in the thin summer morning when all the rich and business people sleep in their quiet houses. The sun is barely a smear of heat and light in the sky, and the road is empty but for work trucks and vans. It's the golden hour of working folks, all hauling to the first job, nodding as we pass, our bodies already sore, and soon to be work gloved and sweating. Praise the carpenter, the roofer, the chimney sweep, the plumber, all these sacred, always working fools, scarred and hungry and limping, each day a new hurt but the same job, riding work trucks like crosses, making miracles, then headed off to another set of messes down the road. Look behind paint, concrete drywall dust to find hard-fought days, blood, and years off of lives. All our little houses built on sore backs, forgotten and overlooked until we need them and they appear. Praise these saints of grease and hammer drills in Carhartt rags and jeans, their work-worn hands holding together this old yellow world. Okay, um... Usually I save this for last, but I have a new book out, so I'm going to read from that after this. But this is kind of a summation of... So this book is a, a calendrical, is what it's called. So it's like a poetic journal of a year in the mountains. And all of these appeared in the mountain year. Um, and this is kind of a summation of my time in the mountains and also a relationship that I have with a, a friend that you'll understand. And actually, the ex-girlfriend of the publisher of these two books um, <laughs> used to make wood carvings based on some of the poems, and this is what she made about oh. this poem, it's a fox. <clears throat> Two days after moving into my place on the mountain, it came across the yard like a living flame. So weightless on its paws it could have been floating, its tail the definition of orange, 
all bushy and black-edged. This being, this seemingly sacred thing, my first neighbor to welcome me home. Then a month after that, it was sitting in my driveway, this small beast of fall colors and watching eyes, its den somewhere close, licking its paws like a pet. And in the last year, I smile when I see it. Sometimes it is just a flash in the corner of my vision. Sometimes we stare at each other, me chopping wood or working on my fence. It is my friend, this fox. It has become something I long to see. But tonight on the way home, on the last curve before the top, there in the other lane it lay unmoving, its mouth half open, its eyes squinted shut. My friend in the road, hit and left. Another lovely thing torn away by us. Us who stain the sky with false light and noise. Us who kill and cut and ruin. And I am a part of it all, and my neighbor is dead in the road. I wish I could blame a tourist or a drunk driving carelessly, carelessly, but it could have been me. It was me. It was us. It was all of us. What have we done? What have we done, my friend? Okay, so that's a good segue into this book, which is my parents always read the poems in the paper and try to find some hope in them, so <laughs> they can keep searching. There's, I think it's hopeful to look at a burning house, and, you know, at the end of this book is a quote that I really like by a, a Zen monk that I think kind of defines this. It's, uh, barns burnt down, now I can see the moon, and that's kind of what this tattoo is about, and that's what inspired this book, so... This book is about climate change and about trying to find love and meaning even in a world that feels like it's falling apart. The stars are sparks from fires burnt out song so long before we were born. Maybe they too were once planets poised to burst into flame. Now they linger in the still hot night air, a reminder that we are here now, but that we will soon too be gone. We should pray ourselves so lucky that our light will reach so far beyond our ends. Um, let's see. This is about, so a lot of this is like a, imagining the woods burning, imagining my house burning, trying to write through that. I was working, um, I think on Ridge Road, doing some wood work, like fire mitigation stuff, cutting up dead trees, and I was really depressed about the fires. I was working for the high alpine firewood guys, and uh, it was a house that had just burned down, it had been rebuilt, and there was all these green sprouts poking up, and I was like, okay, maybe there's some sweetness to this burning, you know, that's when this book kind of started, finding the broken light in the burning wood. So, <clears throat> a few pictures of people I love, my great-grandpa's hat, two white t-shirts, a pair of jeans, some underwear and socks, my two favorite collections of poetry. Here is some of what I can save. For when the fire comes, all that I leave behind, my books and records and memories of this home between the pines, will melt into the floor. The package of vanilla incense, which I keep in a drawer next to the stove, will all light up at once, spilling its scent and smoke over the air. How sweet the burning of all my things will smell. How sweet the burning of all my things. How am I on time? Good. This is uh, dedicated to my first dog. His name was Osito. He died a couple of years ago. But this is kind of inspired. It starts when he was alive. There's a sneaker abandoned in the roadside dirt on my parents' neighborhood loop. Rollinsville, in case you want to visualize it. <laughs> it will outlive us all. It's made of things that will never break down. It's been there since I was in high school. Today it looks the same as ever, faintly dusty but not worn out, almost tempting passers-by to try it on or find the other in the pair and put them on and go for a run. I see it when my mom and I walk her dog, as we did with the dog before, this mass of laces and rubber already lasting longer than one generation of our pets. It will lie there, still in the snow and grass throughout the seasons, throughout the rest of my mother's life and mine too. When the world is nowhere near what it was when I was born and young in it, when all the dogs are long gone. Eventually, when I walk no more, the sneaker will remain, immortal in the white dust, a piece of the accidental, useless eternity we made and scattered over the world. Okay. 
Okay. This is a depressing one, but... <laughs> I mean, it's important to remember, I think. Uh, yesterday we went on the Viewpoint Trail in Boulder. My partner's parents are in town. and There was a sign that said there was a um, giant buffalo in this area. A mega fauna buffalo that were like 10 feet tall. And when I'm down in Boulder a lot, I think about the buffalo and how amazing it would have been to see you know, 10 million buffalo running through the plains and how they're all gone. Um, so that's what this poem is about. I think about the buffalo when I drive through the blushing plains of almost spring on the way to fill up my tank after a day of work in the snow. The evils of the past, we are told, are far away, but this high alpine desert is proof of the slaughter. For hooves used to till this spread of dirt and thistle. The herd moved through what is now concrete and subdevelopments, and they left the earth fresh and fertile and rich. There was a symmetry to nature as it once existed, before we broke the balance and built trains across the west from which we murdered 10 million buffalo and stacked their empty skulls in Detroit stockyards before grinding them into fertilizer and dust. The plains now are tinder and tumbleweed and still as death as I head home below another bloody sunset, a hundred odd years since the sound of living thunder moving down this valley. In this silence, I feel my real inheritance. We found a paradise and tamed it into waste.